gather around friends, new and old, and welcome to the Roast and Toast podcast. We are your hosts, David, Jenny, and Philip. It is cold. I always forget oh that. Oh my god, that it's it cold. gets cold. Yeah, it gets colder after Christmas. I'm always like, oh yeah, this is. It's not that cold this year, Chris. And then after Christmas, that's when it really hits you in the nethers. My God. For those who My don't live in God. Arizona, we experience a two-week winter where it just becomes extremely cold. It is that time, and boy, oh boy, are we freezing. Me and the girlfriend traveled up to Flagstaff, Arizona. Oh, where you did. It was, yeah, we went for a little day trip. and Cute. um And it was, and yes, and it was snowing. We went snow booting. We went snow toe tubing, tubbing, something like that. Yeah, and it was it was a lot of fun. It was a great little snow event. Shout out to the girlfriend for planning a wonderful, wonderful excursion in the snow. I am happy to report no yellow snow consumed. That that's that's good. That's, David that had is <laughs> a wonderful report. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, David. Do you uh, <laughs> do you enjoy playing in the snow? Do you enjoy being in the snow? I I do. Any particular reason you're asking? I just figured you're in snow far more than than the novelty of we had to travel even to go see snow. And well, I mean, we don't we get a lot of snow in. here though. It's it's warmer here than than it used to be. Like decades ago, it was colder. But mm. thank you to climate change, it it is not usually very cold cold enough to snow. So we're, we're we had like a week of really cold, like below zero freezing temperatures celsius and that was nice because then the, the sky sort of cleared up and it was crisp and cold but you just put on the layers and it's like bright and beautiful there was no snow unfortunately but even so and then now we're back to above zero still really cold damp drizzle misery dark gray etc moodless jenny no mood was- full but very moody Mm, got it. Got it. Full of the mood. Yes. Jenny? How was oh, your week? well, how was I... your time away? Oh, it was lovely. And there was one highlight I would love to talk about. So I had to drive to Sedona over the course of one evening Beautiful. for a special gig for a couple celebrating their 10 year wedding, wedding anniversary. So four singers went up there, including myself. And we sang an acapella rendition of Paradise by Coldplay because it was their special oh. song. It was very, very fun. We got to perform in their hotel room. We performed like in front of their like, living area window because it was, we didn't want the original oh, okay. plan was to sing okay. outside, but you know, it's snowing in Sedona right now. And we're all like, the whole time. So there's no way we could sing properly. So. We sing in their hotel room. There was it was so cute. They had rose petals everywhere, and there was candles lit. It was so romantic, and the surprise went perfectly. The man who hired us, his wife, was completely surprised. The moment she started shedding happy tears, I was like, "Yes, we won." That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. You guys had your own beatboxing, and it was a romantic surprise. You were all feeling romantical. Yes, I we were. It. Pa, pa, pa. We are back around to a movie review. It's Christmas season has passed. This one is just a blockbuster. The latest release, literally, like as 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 latest as it gets at the moment, at the time of recording. At I the time say. of recording. Yeah. We are reviewing a movie, and it is a cult classic remake. Yes. And it is Mean Girls. Mean Girls 2024. That say it with your chest, David. Now. It's 2024. Mean Girls. <laughs> yes. What makes it new? What makes it different? It's a musical. It's a musical. God, I love a good musical. It's a remake of a remake of a remake. Yes, an interesting, interesting thing. Okay, let's go around the room really quickly because I think that this will matter since it came to be so only 20 years ago. Okay. Has everybody seen the original? The original Mean Girls with Lindsay Lohan? Many, many times. Of course. Of course. Okay, so we were all in that boat. We all yes. went in knowing that scene. That okay, good, good, good to and know. I've premise, also seen the musical, so I've seen both previous versions before oh, I, this one. 
Okay, good. So you've seen the on stage musical, the the Tony Award. Yes. Okay, David, I'd imagine you're with me in that you have not done that. No, no, I had not either. So I was unaware, completely oblivious to the music and additions story wise that they would have done. So that's that's interesting, Jenny. Well, that's a very good perspective that we'll have to go to specifically. However, first. Let's mosey on down to David. David, can you tap dance us out a little compilation of the summary of what what goes on in this movie, in this musical, in this moment? Katie Heron and her mom (laughs) moved back to America after years in Africa where Katie was homeschooled. Katie must now do her best to fit in at your stereotypical clique-ridden high school. She quickly makes friends who give her the rundown of the hierarchy of the school, and at the top of the food chain is Regina George. In a twist of the norm, Regina welcomes Katie into her exclusive little friend group, where she, where the focus is on being the center of attention and privately degrading everyone else. Katie starts an altruist starts, excuse me, Katie starts as altruistic, spying on Regina and her and co for her original friends. However, she slowly sinks deeper into the role she's playing, and soon enough she has become exactly like Regina. Can Katie rediscover her true self? Can she salvage the relationships that truly matter to her? Can she get the guy whose crystal blue eyes stole her heart? Aww. (laughs) Very good, David. Applause, applause. I think it's as good of a time as any, and with every single movie review that we do, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen any rendition, any version of the Mean Girls story, go watch it, and then come back to watch this one, okay? Or listen to this one. Because it is almost, there's going to be a lot of comparing, I think, in, in this specific film of what made this film different, what made this film unique, and what paid homage in a in a good way. So, with that, let's go to our first category of the film. Jenny, what was your bestest or favoriteest thing about the film in its entirety? I just want to get this out there right now. This casting was done extremely well. Based on the version from both agree. previous versions of the movie and of the musical, I thought the casting was spot on. The way that the performances were done by the individual plastics, the performance from from Katie, the performance from Janice also, she killed it. I was, come on, Moana, you go, Moana. Four for you, Moana. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were all great. So I, I'm just going to say that over and over again. The ones who stood out to me specifically that I want to highlight the actress who played Karen, while she definitely was, like, extreme, I thought her performance was hilarious. I was cackling the whole time. Regina George brought a lot of joy to me because there was a lot of updates for 2024 in this movie, a lot of inclusivity, body positivity, etc. And I noticed that our good friend Renee Rapp, Regina George herself, was a mid-sized queen, and that brought me so much joy. It shows that you don't have to be skinny to play a queen bee. I said it. Amen. David, what was your... Yeah, the casting was something I noted as well. Kudos to them for finding Anjuri Rice and Jenna Fisher, who look like mother and daughter. Oh my gosh, they yes, did! They, that they was simply great! Do. I know, I was like, oh, wow, nailed it. And also, like, <laughs> kudos for casting... As far as I know, they all did their own singing. Yeah, mm. I'm going to agree. Yes. yes. I, I mm-hmm. tried to look it up and I didn't find anything on that. So I presume they all did their own singing. So kudos to them for finding musical theater trained actors. And you probably wouldn't know this, David. I don't know. If, I mean, because I didn't know this going into it. But the one who plays Regina George, Renee Rapp, originated that role on Broadway. So she was no, one she of the didn't few originate I mean, I figured that because she, she has no... It. Oh, she, she didn't? Uh, no, she didn't. Taylor Louderman did, but she oh, but, but she, she, play but she has Broadway. played she the role. Or? She has played the role on Broadway, on Broadway. before. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Got so it. I figured at least that because she has no previous film credits. All right. Yeah. My best thing about this film is not the cinematography as much as the cinematographer, because I felt as though the cinematographer and director were having a lot of fun playing with camera angles, especially around Regina George, especially early in the film to give Regina George power. The camera angles were 
really cool. You can see yes. the fun that they were having with that, and I appreciated it. So that was my best thing about this film. I thought it was amongst the best social media perspective lens in a, in a film. Like the TikTokification in view of that, I thought that that was very good. I thought that when they moved to a wide angle and on all that stuff. That yes, was very clever. Good. And then that to your me point, joy. yeah, I, I thought that was quite good. And then to your point, Jenny, my, my thing would have been the casting of Damien. I thought that always a delight on screen on on screen he the fact that he was almost too gay to function and just kept on being delight and doing the whole barbie dolls with with i thought that he was just a, a joy to watch but if i have to i thought that there was a lot of for my bestest thing that hasn't been said i thought that the that sometimes you you look at things and you and you wonder whether or not it should be made into a movie. Like, what perspective does this have? What justification does this have to be made into a movie? Especially if it's already on stage. Why does it need to be a movie? And I thought some of the visual gags and props that would just not be possible on stage, a la the love swing made out of a desk when she's... That was uh, clever. When she's doting over Aaron in her class with uh, the whole math in calculus and algebra thing i thought that that was very clever i thought that, that was done well that whenever they were in the hallways and and doing a revenge party or whatever i thought that, that was very well done so so there were there were a few prop pieces in here that i thought were clever and done very well that justified the existence of making it into a movie as opposed to just a stage musical that i thought okay they probably built upon what the musical on stage did for my worst thing about this film, and I think sometimes we all stumble and, and gather, all three of us, move towards one thing, whether it be the best thing, we all try to go to the same thing or whatever. I think that all three of us will have different worst things about this film because there's some, there's a lot of swings, but there's, there's a fair amount of misses, I feel like. And j just to generalize where I think this film is a major miss is I don't think that the movie, as far as a story gets going until about halfway through. And this is a sin, an original sin of the movie that I remembered watching the film where just, God, once we get to the, about the, the crescendo of the middle part to about that first house party, until that point of the film, it's a bit of a slog. It just, it gives a clueless vibe from the 1990s where you just, it just feels kind of hard to get through. I don't think a lot of the songs in the first half of the film, outside of maybe Apex Predator, are really, I don't know if it's just the mixing of whatever it was, but they weren't that energetic. They they didn't serve a lot. They were somewhat boring. I think a lot of the weakest songs are in there. I think a lot of the weakest story elements. The best thing is always just one exclusive thing that you're looking forward to, and then it gets boring again. So as a generality, I think that it doesn't do like what, what a Steven Spielberg did to West Side Story in the newest thing where... It has obviously original sins, but you don't have to, you, you, because it's a movie and a remake, then remake it, rewrite the script to make it better or re, re just make adjustments. And it did, did little tweaks. I think it could have done more to service the beginning portion of this film. David, what's your worst thing about the film? This frustrated me to no end throughout the entire film. There is a disconnect between the, the, the singing and the mouth moving. Yeah. What? The whole film. That that it's it's like you've got them like Katie like daydreaming on the desk, like her hand like pressed up against her mouth, and she's like super relaxed and she's like daydreaming and, and she's singing and meanwhile the singing is like full on belting like like oh, chesty yeah. singing. And I'm like, if if it's a musical if if you're having the characters break the moment to sing a song, it's okay for them to break physical like physical posture of daydreaming and sing the song. I can't like it was so obvious to me that at no point in the film it, it, did it feel like the vocals were coming from the actor at the at that moment. And and I get it that they're not. They're recorded in a booth, you know. I get that. But you got to do better. You got to do better. It was, so, it took me out of it throughout the entire film. The entire film, I was like, she's not singing. She's not singing. She's not only, singing. Right now, only, she is not 
singing. She doesn't even look like she's singing. She's not She's not doing anything with her chest. She does not look remotely like she's singing. And that, that it's a Renee musical. Rap, it's okay for them to look like they're singing. You know why? Because they're singing. Or they, they're supposed to be. Why is it that mu- movie musicals from the f***ing 1960s did a better job of this? Maybe because they were singing on set. They were actually singing, yeah. <laughs> Fine. Th- then f***ing do that. If they could do it in the 1960s, they can do it today. Do oh, that. <laughs> ah! Technically, the one that would have also done this recently, I don't know how you feel about it, is Les Mis. That, that one was shot oh, on location. Oh, that's a clear, with, obvious with... sign of they record it in a booth, yeah. and then they were just mouthing the words in the filming. Yes. Yeah. But... I was going to say, but, which is but interesting. But you have to do better. You have to do better. I'm sorry. I thought, Re- I thought Renee Rapp and, and as Regina George was the only one who felt in in line with her. Maybe. maybe. To, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I maybe. would disagree I, with I, that I didn't statement. Notice Jenny that felt personally. Jenny felt uh, differently. Okay. Will Byrne Jenny, especially. She was just kind of like being pretty and standing and mouthing when she, and when yeah. with the, oh, the vocals God, were like, oh, yeah. she's full belting and that's in a booth. That's not on the film. Who, who are we talking okay. about now? We're Regina talking about George. Regina George during Renee Rapp? World. When yeah. so the sequence mm. I'm referring to is the sequence during the song. I think it's called World Burn. Watch the World Burn, where yeah. oh, everything's yeah. exploding around her, but yeah. she's just right. like standing all pretty like this and sexy, just. Meh. But it's like yeah, it's just belting. We're like, oh come yeah. on, guys. Yeah, <laughs> it's but it's a consistent problem throughout the entire film, and I blame the director. I blame the director. Jenny, what's your least favorite thing about this? I'm going to end this passionate section of this episode on a lighthearted note. I felt like there should have been more John Hamm. (laughs) (laughs) That was—it felt like a throwaway cameo by the end of it. I was like, okay, he got his sperm uh, well joke off, and then that's it. I will say that this Coach Car character is extremely problematic in the original movie, so I understand why they didn't give too much attention to Coach Car. But personally, seeing but you can make a character problematic. Yeah. And do that even like they could have lent into that and and just highlighted that he was problematic. Yes, I just wish that John Hamm got a little more screen time. They only featured him for like a minute or two, the entire time. Yeah. And I was like, come on, this is John Hamm, guys. John Hamm, come on. I know, right? <laughs> John Hamm. John Hamm. <laughs> Well, so we talked about the best and we talked about the worst. That means that we need to talk about things that were kind of good, kind of not. I mean, probably needed more time baking in the oven. David, what was your thing that was half there, baked? Yeah, there were there were some references to jokes from the original movie, right? They're, they they redid yeah. those jokey moments, right? One of them October was the October 3rd. Yeah, or October 3rd. And another one was four for you, Glenn Coco. You mm-hmm. go, Glenn Coco. Mm-hmm. Which in the original movie is kind of a throwaway moment. It's like, oh, four for you, Glenn Coco. You go, Glenn Coco. It's natural. And in this movie, they like, they like, they will wink, like the hit hell the out nail. Of you. Like they, they were like, this is the moment. Remember from the first movie, and they like highlighted it way too much. Like it's a throwaway moment, and that's what made it so iconic. So they didn't do that well. And across the board, those moments that were rehashes from the first movie, which most of the movie is a rehash, and they didn't do those justice, I think. They, they sh- if they were going to redo them, then they should have redone them in in, in either, either a similar way, where it's like it fits in naturally with the movie, or done them differently, which may not have, may not have gone down super well. So I don't know, but they just didn't, it, it wasn't, it was half-baked. It wasn't quite baked all the way through. Philip, you next. What, what what was half baked for you? So I don't know if this is a critique of the musical itself or the movie because I don't know where those two merge and maybe Jenny can can shed some light on that. But the music didn't... It was about 50-50 for me where not in just in a bop by itself, like that's the greatest showman, right? Where every song is really, really good. Just the justification of it doesn't necessarily matter. But even in, in terms of, of its nece- necessity to exist, of its need to be there in order to expand upon a character's growth and development, to give us their innermost thoughts, to develop them as a character to the audience, explain who they are, 
It was about 50-50 on whether or not I thought that was an effective tool or justified its its need to be there. Like, it, World Burn is kind of impressive, and maybe, again, that's the movie's fault for not coming across as impressive as it probably is in the in the in in a live theater setting, which I, I kind of r- was cognizant of. But even beyond that, there were, I, I, I thought that there were times where it did a lot to develop characters a la Gretchen Wieners' song that I thought that in the original mm-hmm. film, she doesn't get that much development, so I appreciated that. I thought that there were times where the original friends, Damien and, I want to say Lisa, are, are no, sorry, Janice, excuse me. Janice. Janice and... Li- da- Janice. <laughs> Lisa? Lisa, you're tearing me apart. No, where the original friends were were... Still somewhat underdeveloped. They served a purpose more than they were developed, and then they came into prominence near the second half of the movie, possibly. I thought that especially the character Damien was was brought forth a lot, and then brought to life with more music and given more more words to sing. But for all that, for all that, then there were just a complete throwaway songs. Whether that be some of Regina's songs, dare I say, that didn't, I don't think really served her and didn't serve the plot other than it's just like, hey, it's been a while since we've had a song. Some some songs worked, some songs didn't. That's, I think, where where it ends up for me. Jenny, take us home. What, what was half-baked for you? I always get a little... A little personal, specific thing for me. When I'm watching stories about high schoolers, I would just always hope that the performance would remind me of high schoolers. No, these are all (laughs) full-blown adults. These are all adults that have been training Mm. in dance school and musical theater school for several years. So they are put on the screen to portray high schoolers. And I just wish that someday we will get more high school movies that actually show high schoolers and not just adults being fancy doing Cirque du Soleil in the background while people are walking toward a camera. That's my thought. <laughs> How dare you, Jenny? Did you not see everybody else who wasn't Evan Hansen and dear Evan Hansen the movie? They were all of oh, age. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 30-something Ben Platt playing a high schooler. Kinda, I just Kind of takes know. away from that. But all everybody else was a kid, yeah. No, I, I the agree. The only music, the only musical that has successfully done this for a movie adaptation is the movie Thirteen. Everybody in that show was in that movie was actually thirteen, not in this version. Sorry, Mean Girls, you failed me in this department. Mm. I will say ten out of ten. I, I'm sure that we all have our lines. I didn't remember this line from the original movie, but getting some new meat in our lady taco is is an amazing. That's an exquisite line. Said by Regina George, Mrs. George. <laughs> that was amazing when she hugged her and brought that up. I thought that that was fantastic. All right. Shout out to Busy Phillips. She did great. Yes, 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 yes. All right, let's go around the room. Is it a good film? And would you recommend others to go see it? I think, does it, does it do justice to the original film? Let's go with you first, Jenny. I have to remind myself that this is, this is a, a remake of the musical with highlights to the original movie for that reason i would say it is a good movie it's one of the better musical to movie adaptations that i have seen i thought it was done very well and with care is it perfect no but i think it did pretty well it's not something we asked for either but for what it is they did a good job i recommend people to see it if they love musicals if they love mean girls if this is their vibe, these musical comedy things. Yeah, sure. Would I personally watch it again? I won't go after it. I won't seek it out. But if it's playing on someone's TV, yeah, I'll totally watch it. I thought it was good. I don't know if this movie stands alone. I'd say if you've seen the original, then this is worth a watch. And I think that the message is more pronounced in this one. So that's a benefit. I don't I don't think I'd recommend it to everybody. It'd be a very small audience that I would recommend to go see it. And it's I. It's got an official I title to it for me. So it's all right. Mm-hmm. David? I really hated this film in the first half of it. Like, I yes. really, I was hating it. Yes. I thought it was so, such a stupid idea. It <laughs> made up for it a little in the second half. Like, 
the problem overall is that it's really not doing much, much uh, different from the original movie. Yeah. I don't think you're going to have that much of a, unless you're a huge musical nerd, then you might enjoy this more than the original movie. Otherwise, I don't think there's any reason why you might enjoy this more than the original movie because there's they're almost exactly the same. Like, there's really the the differences are trivial. I don't think it's great at all. I thought. Some of the performances were really good. Some of them were okay. It's fine. I mean, it's fine. It was. It had some entertainment value, and yet it was all rehashed from a movie I've already seen. So, nah. I thought. Look, I was watching this movie thinking, "Huh, this would make a really great stage show because it's a musical and it is a right. stage show." Basically, they were just like, "Let's do that, <laughs> but on screen." And that's that's it. So, th- th- there's not much value here. I really don't think there's much value here. By all means, go see the show on Broadway. I'm sure it's great, based on seeing this movie. And the original movie is a classic for a reason. It's funny. It's it you know, it's novel. Whatever. This one is basically the same thing, but with singing. So, no, I'm not going to be in a rush to watch this again. Would I recommend it? Yeah. That's an excellent nah. point. That's an excellent point, though, David. I do. I think you can see even in the film the merits of its existence in a musical form on stage. That does yeah. come through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's. I don't a think. Great the, point. I think the songs are like. I thought Apex Predator was a really fun song. Yes. And I would love to see that on stage. I'm not a big musical guy, but yeah, I think it has like. I think this, this has all the makings of a good musical, you know. But on screen, it's like, uh. Jenny. Take us home with some fun facts. We need some fun in our life. So the music that you hear in this movie is, of course, from the Broadway musical. This was written by... The the music was written by Jeff Richmond, and the lyrics are by Nell Benjamin, with a book written by, of course, who else? Tina yeah. Fey. This version of the Mean Girls opened in April 2018 on Broadway. And... Let's see. Back to the movie. There are several fun references throughout this version of of Mean Girls that hint to the original 2004 movie. I'll name a few of them quickly. So, in the first ho- in the song Sexy, Karen's song, the Halloween montage, we see a flash of the cutout boobs outfit that Regina George wears from a prank in the original movie. We see a picture of Tim Meadows as Mr. Duvall when he, from the original 2004 film that's hanging above him in his office. And finally, Damien does a little nod to Ariana Grande by saying, thank you, next. And this is important because Ariana Grande, for her song, Thank You, Next, she did a spoof on Mean Girls. And she covered all of these popular high school films that she loved in her video. So that was a little nod to that. Mm. Very nice. So Tim Meadows, fun fact, when they were filming the original 2004 movie, actually broke his hand. Is that so what that was? So they had him wear a cast. Yeah. yeah, so he was wearing a cast because at the time he actually broke his hand. So for fun, they like to joke in the movie that he is suffering from a carpal tunnel. Yeah. Uh. So they kept it consistent throughout the musical, I think, and the movie by making sure he was wearing a cast on his hand. That is hilarious. <laughs> Last fact. In the original movie, Lindsay Lohan was actually booked to play Regina George first. They switched it around and recast Lindsay Lohan as Katie and booked Rachel McAdams as Regina George because there was this whole thing about how, as Rachel would say, nice girls are always have always have an easier time playing the mean girls. Mean girls out in theaters right now as of listening to this and as of its release. Kind of go check it out. Enjoy popcorn. Maybe. Yeah, enjoy the popcorn. <laughs> enjoy the trailers. It's somewhat fetch. <laughs> David was blown away by our transition that there. was very uh, loud. He was very loud, yes. We bring to you a segment that we do intermittently. There's no rhyme or reason whenever it comes around. Just something in our life props it up. It's called Hear Me Out. It's when one of our hosts have a question for the other two that they need help figuring it out. Or maybe they even know it, but they just want to hear their side. They want to, they want to really bring to light whatever they're feeling. So I am bringing forth this mini segment today because I have a question for the two of you. Go on. So I work at a tips-based job mm-hmm. where a lot of my income, the majority of my income, is based off of the 
generosity of others, of people. The majority? Yeah, the majority. Yeah, the vast majority. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. So, with that being said, it is of my best interest to do whatever it is that I, I can to generate tips, yes? So, I was walking down the hallway with one of my coworkers, and as I bent over to tie my shoe, I saw him have in dis- on display on his person, like on his name tag, a picture of what I knew to be his child. I, I, I don't know whether it's his son or his daughter, but his child as a, as a little infant is on, is on his name tag. And I just had the, the, the thought, I was like, oh, wow, that, that, what, that's really good. Yeah, that's right. I forgot that they have a kid. I, bet, I wonder if that does anything for them as far as tips. And then that thought lingered. And so my oh. question to you is, d- two, one, is, would there be anything wrong with me putting a stock photo of a, of a random child, and if people were to ask, or maybe even hopefully just assume that I have a, a, a child at home that I'm supporting, would there be anything wrong with that? And two, two, should I feel guilty about that? I think, I think on the face of it, there is definitely something morally wrong about that. However, is it a line you're willing to cross? Is it a line I would be willing to cross? Probably. Because <laughs> I also work in a tips-based profession. Yes, I thought profession. that, yes, yes. And do I sometimes BS a little to up the tips? Of course I do. So, I mean, it's just BSing a little more. So I don't think there's any, like, I, I don't think it's a line you shouldn't cross. It's not like, um... I don't even know what another example would be. It's a tricky be. question. But, but I, 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 it is technically, I think definitely there is something morally wrong about that. You're, you're deceiving someone. Yeah, I, that makes me feel a little uncomfy thinking about it. But I mean, if that's a way to guarantee a little extra money in your pocket, like... I don't blame anyone for doing that. Like, it's, I personally don't work in a tip-based profession. There are times right. where I do, but it's based on my level of service and not mm-hmm. so much me trying to, like, pull someone in. People, I'm supposed to be the per. I'm there. Right. I'm designated there to be the only person to be providing services. So it's not like I'm competing with other people to get money. But yeah, I I don't I I don't think I like that <laughs> idea personally. <laughs> it feels so it feels so not. It feels so but nice. it just <laughs> and not but not the it good just, kind. So Jenny, is there no not the good yeah, kind? Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Is, <laughs> Jenny, is there any comparison to where it's like that's just. That would be my version of an emotional push-up bra. Like, I'm not a woman, so I can't just, like, put goods on display. But I can put, you know, well, something to tug at the heart. <laughs> I, I, I can put something on the heartstring display. Like, that's just, that's my emotional cleavage, Jenny. That's my emotional. I understand. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've, had, yeah. I've had different I would thoughts. I would say this. Philip, before you do this, search First of all, for something in your life that, that is real that you could use to mm. tug on emotional heartstrings. Yes. My second piece of advice would be to at least choose a photo of a baby that is related in some way to you. Yes, not just some random photo. Right. <laughs> not a stock photo from online. No. Oh my God, who is that? And it's then maybe niece. consider a stock photo. <laughs> yeah, a niece or a... My second cousin, twice <laughs> removed. Oh. She's starving right now. She hasn't had lunch yet. <laughs> Jesus. Younger, uh, younger sister. <laughs> she hasn't had lunch in like anyway. two hours. Yeah, she hasn't had a good solid meal. Oh god! All right, I don't. You I, have you have uh, the advice you saw you sought. I, so I, I think I on. yes, I think I do. It's it's naughty yeah. is, is my takeaway. Yes. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's emotionally Those were Jenny's words. Naughty. Yes, yes, emotionally naughty. I I chose that word specifically. Yep, mm, that was me. Oh god. Well, as the wolf howls, we too must get going. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna be. We too must get gone. I guess I will keep that in now. <laughs> now we're whatever. All right, that is it for the freaking show. <laughs> There's uh, speaking of being naughty, but we got some people that we genuinely need to thank with no emotional tugging of the heartstrings yes. at all. Thank you to Cass and Crossland and Jake Corlang for the music you hear on this show. 
Thank you to Ryan Ardell and Josh Hans for a lot of the audio bits you hear throughout the show. Thank you to Rudy Chalk for all of your wonderful graphic design work that you see in all of our social media. And thank you to you, the listener, listening in right now. Yes, you, listening. Yes, we appreciate your patronage. We appreciate your support. Uh, by all means, if you haven't already, go and find us on social medias, Instagram, or we're a Roast and Toast podcast, pod, excuse me, Roast and Toast pod on Instagram. Of course, if you have not listened to our archive, our library of episodes in the back catalog, go ahead and listen to them now. We've got a whole whole bunch back there for you to listen and enjoy uh, and that of course can be found wherever you find all of your favorite podcasts whether that be Spotify podcasts Apple podcasts Google podcasts really anywhere except for Pandora why because screw you Pandora all right who's gonna talk next <sighs> She doesn't even go here. She's a bear. <laughs> <laughs>